Good afternoon traders, it's Bill Baruch from Blue Line Futures and this is the FX Rundown. The Euro is sticking its neck down below 112, it's looking to take out that March low. So keep an eye on that as well, the dollar index is looking for a breakout here. Now we have data tomorrow on the, in the US, durable goods, and this could really either confirm or deny a breakout. Now it's less about the US data and overall about the weakness abroad. You're seeing this morning German IFO business climate miss for the sixth time in the last seven months. And then US, the U.S. stock market continues to make all-time highs. Money is flowing over from overseas into the U.S., and this is firming the U.S. dollar. Now, we do have that durable goods tomorrow. It's going to be crucial because the data in the U.S. hasn't been great. But it, overall, again, the dollar has acted as a safe haven. And if the durable goods number comes in better than expected, you're going to see the dollar index try to break out of a thick area of resistance, 97.70-98. If it does do that, and, and then on Friday it closes out above 98, it's going to set it on a technical path towards 100 and a half to 101. Now look at that as a technical breakout and things never move directionally. There's obviously going to be hurdles in between now as well as non-farm payroll next week. That could either confirm or deny this breakout, but on a technical basis, that's what we're looking at. And then for the euro, down below 111.84 and a half, you have closed down below there. You're going to have really have a path least resistance down to that round number of 110. So watch that on that dribble goods tomorrow and the weekly job is claimed. Now moving on, the yen is uh, hitting our major three-star support going into the Bank of Japan meeting tonight. So make sure if you've been following our bearish bias, you capitalize on something down here uh, or just get out of the position all, altogether. The Bank of Japan is not expected to do anything on rates. However, they're going to uh, lower their inflation targets again and maybe acknowledge the law of diminishing returns. The only thing that could light a fire under the yen is potentially then again acknowledging that law of diminishing returns and then somehow saying they will tighten policy we don't see this uh, happening uh, but ultimately it's something to keep an eye on going forward and then lastly looking at the commodity currencies the Aussie and the Canadian have both taken a hit this week uh, the Aussie is now pushing into that 70 area that we do have support down there but if it does close below 70 it's going to open the door down to 68 and a half was that early part of the year that knee-jerk reaction we did see one night uh, right after the open Open, and it did put a quick bottom in. But ultimately, again, continue to close below 70 is going to encourage further selling. And then for the Canadian, we did have the Bank of Canada today, and they took off any rate hike expectations, which has put pressure on the Canadian. The Canadian we've been talking about, we've been bearish. It has not joined crude oil in this rally. And overall, that we, we looked at that as a bearish sign for the Canadian dollar. It is hitting our major three-star support. However, we see no reason to change our bearish bias there. Give us a call. We're here to help with anything on the board, 312-278-0500. You can email us info at bluelinefutures.com. Check our website for updates, and you can sign up for a free trial of our research there. But remember, futures trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Thanks a lot.